first question to, to open up, and we'll open up to a couple of questions a, a little bit later on, is can you paint a picture for me, Richard, of what the world looked like for you as a 14 or 15 year old when you're in the situation where these students are at? What's, what's life looking like for you and, and where, what are you seeing on the horizon? Uh, well, I was, uh, yeah, 14 years old, 15 years old. I was not good at school. Um, uh, and, uh, and um, des de you know, you know want wanted to do something with my life. Um, the, there was a, a very unnecessary war going on, the Vietnamese War, um, uh, that um, was, was um, killing and maiming thousands of people. And a lot of young people of my age were thinking, you know, we've, we've got to come up with a way of trying to stop this war. Um, and, um, and I thought maybe, maybe we could start a, uh, a school magazine that would campaign against the war um, and get, you know, and give young people um, a way of expressing themselves. And, um, and so, you know, I, I started pulling together um, a, this, this school magazine and um, used the school phone box to sell, you know, sell a bit of advertising. Um, and, um, and then when the magazine came out, uh, young people liked it and I decided to actually leave school to run it. Um, and, um, and it became my education. So, um, and, uh, and I learned, you know, I learned a lot about, um, you know, about the world by going out and interviewing people and, and questioning you know, questioning people and, uh, and you know, and the young, young people then had a voice where they could express themselves through the magazine. Um, and um, so, I, you know, because I wasn't that good at school, I, I got my education from, uh, yeah, from, from uh, creating the magazine. Do you, um, you know, do you remember after, in that whirlwind of, you know, 15 year old going out big wide world and going and interviewing lots of people trying to tackle on you know massive issues like wars and around the world what um do you remember the first person you looked at as a mentor or the first person that sort of took an interest in you you said you weren't particularly good at school but someone outside that said hey hang on a minute this guy might have something special well i think because i was uh because i believed in myself and believed in what i was doing and was enthusiastic um uh there were you know, a, a number of people who were willing to help. So, um, you know, so I would, you know, I, I mean, there would, there would be, say, a retired accountant who would, uh, you know, help me, you know, work out my figures in the, in the evenings. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, there were, you know, journalists from newspapers who would, you know, um, you know, who would sort of take me under my wings, under their wings and, and help me. Um, and I, so I think if you if you do have a uh, you know if you do have an idea that um, that you know and, and enough determination, I think people people will be willing to help you. Um, and I think one what you know one set of mentors that I think don't get tapped into enough are are people who've just retired. I mean you know when when you retire, you know life can be quite lonely. Um, and so to be, to be able to help um, you know help take under your wing students uh, and, um, uh, or, or young, young people who are trying to create businesses uh, is, is, is a great thing for, um, for you know, elders to do when they, when, they, when, they, when they step down from running businesses or um, you know, working in accountancy firms or lawyer firms and so on. Um, so I think if, you know, with, people, with people here, if, they've got, you know, they, if they're enthusiastic about something, I think they will be able to get people to help them. But you've got to have that enthusiasm first of all uh, so that people have got something to help you about and when and when you look at those you know that accountant that helped you after hours was it can you unpack for me how you got them to help you well I think I, I mean I think they uh, they believed in what I was trying to do um, you know I think uh, uh, you know and, and again I think if you know if, if I mean you have people what, what the kids here have to think about if they want to become, um, you know, if they want to create a business, they have to think, you know, how can I make a difference to other people's lives? Um, you know, what, 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 you know, what, you know, what, uh, you know, what are other people not doing well that I could do better? Um, and that's all that a business is. It's, it's coming up with an idea that can improve other people's lives. 
And if you come up with that idea and, it's, and, and people like your idea, then I think a lot of people will want to help you. Um, and um, so, uh, you know, so I think, you know, what would be a great exercise for the students here to do is try to think, you know, what, you know who's, not doing, who's not doing something very well? You know, what, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, if, if you've got a hobby, you know, is there, is there, is there a better way of doing it? Um, and um, if there's a better way of doing it, you have a business. And, and then if, you, if you've created something which is uh, improving other people's lives, then you'll find mentors who'll be very ha happy to come and help you, I think. And if you, you fast forward to today for us, you know, a long way from a 15 year old starting a student magazine, who, who do you turn to for help now? Who are your mentors that you have today? Um, well, I think what, what, what I've learned is to find good people um, and, uh, and delegate, delegate, you know, um, delegate the day to day running of all up. <clears throat> businesses to good people and giving them a lot of a lot of trust to make mistakes as well as to make good things and you know not to criticize them if they make mistakes because you know if you're if you're going to try to create a business <clears throat> you're going to make mistakes on the way and you know and in fact if you're afraid of making mistakes you won't you won't create anything so so you've got you've got to um, find, find people who are willing to uh, just say screw it, let's do it, and, and, and try and try things. Sometimes fall flat on their face. Sometimes pick themselves up. Um, and uh, and you know, so my mentors are just you know a, a, a mass of people around the world who work for Virgin, who um, are coming up with new ideas all the time. Um, uh, and uh, and then a lot of people are not working for Virgin. I mean, you know, we 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 have a. You know a Twitter account, and you know a lot of people, you know, communicate with us through the Twitter account, or come up with, you know, business ideas through the Twitter account, and we have a team of people who, you know, sift through those and try to, you know, see if any stand out, stand out from the crowd, um, and then and and a lot of our best businesses come from, you know, like people sitting in this room who come up with an idea for, a, you know, for a, for a business idea who think that maybe Virgin could work with them on it, who, who approach us on it, um, and. Um, and I think, what, you know, if you have a really good idea and you get turned down, you know, don't give up. I mean, because you're know, trying trying to you know, get get an idea accepted is, you know, the, the, um, you know, you're, you're going to get kicked back time and time again. You know, just you know, be be absolutely determined to um, to push your idea through, and and you know, hopefully, ultimately, um, you'll 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 get it off the ground. Yeah, awesome. We, we might open up for, I think we've got time for about five questions from, from the group. So we, anyone that wants to be brave and chuck their hand up and, and ask a question. Hello. Hi. Hi, Richard. How are you? Very good. That's good. Um, we, we sort of, the question was asked whether, um, like, who are your mentors? Do you actually mentor a lot of other people or um, are you open to mentoring people? Yourself? Um, well, I do. Uh, I, I, I go out on the road. I feel like a bit like a rock star on tour sometimes. So, um, and um, do talks and answer uh, answer questions and um, and so share share some of my experiences in that way. And um, and I put aside about 30, 30 days a year to do that. Um, and um, and sometimes you know. Uh, uh, yeah, do, you know, do, do it on in, in you know, universities like this, um, uh, or 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 um, you know, or, or you know, like this afternoon I'm doing a speech and um, you know, raising money for our foundation as well. And hopefully, you know, in these discussions, a few a few you know ideas seep through to people. And um, I mean, there was one d d talk I was doing once in. Um, in Greece, and this person kept on asking me questions, and I kept on answering them. Uh, they ended up coming to England and competing with our company, so I sort of slightly, <laughs> slightly, slightly regretted that, that particular discussion. So, um, but um, uh, you know, but but uh, yeah, so it's really through through situations like this, through writing books. Um, you know, I've written about six or seven books, and. Um, and um, that, you know, that's the kind of way I share, share what I've learned. Thank you very much. You're very inspirational. Thank you. Yeah. 
national at your National Achievers Congress. And so I was also wondering what you do of anything to support women and girls to achieve in business. At the National... The National Achievers Congress that you're running, it doesn't have any female speakers, so there's about 15 men speaking about how they're achieving um, things. I, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we're running something called the National Achievers Congress. I think I might be speaking at it. Is yes, that yeah, I think that, that might be the, what the question okay. about. So is, is there another way to work that question is what's your, um, how do you look at, at women in business and the, I suppose the growth and change you've seen over right. the last 20 years and what excites you about women entrepreneurship and, and what you're seeing coming through? Yeah, I think, I think, um, uh, I think it's, a, it's a good point. If, if there is a conference and it doesn't have women women speakers, uh, you know, they, they're making a mistake. They need to get a balance. Um, they, um, uh, you know, I was talking, uh, you know, I, I, I was talking earlier about companies and, you know, and how little representation there is in boardrooms, of, you know, of, um, of women. And, and I think some of, a lot of our virgin companies are not by no means perfect. But, um, but I think the, there, there is something to be said that, there should be a law that actually says that you know 50% of all, all companies should have 50% of women representative because unless you force an issue like that, um, the uh, companies themselves, because they're run by men, uh, you know they're apt to just think, well, we'll take you know we'll, we'll take on more men in the boardroom. Um, I think companies themselves will benefit, but from having more more equal representation of, of, of women and men, um, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, so so it's difficult to change people's. You know, it's, it's difficult to sort of shift people, and um, sometimes you need uh, you know legal legal ways to actually try to try to shift people. Yeah, is that the place I'm talking this afternoon? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think which place it is. We might. Why don't we so, hold it? And we, I will, uh, yeah, if it, I will definitely. If, I, if it's the place I'm talking this afternoon, I'll definitely have a word with them. So. There you go. <laughs> what else have we got? Probably a space for about three more questions. Who wants to throw a real curveball? What else you got? <laughs> you should come. You should come along this afternoon and give them help. <laughs> why did you decide to help the AIM program? Um, well. I would like to take credit for it, but um, it was the it was the team at um, Virgin America, sorry, Virgin Australia that um, that got involved, and um, and it seems from the little I know about it, it just seems like a great idea. Um, I think that um, you know we we, we I, I think we all benefit from mentors, and uh, and I think I think this is this is a tremendous tremendous program, um, and I'm very very pleased that they've. You know that they're helping, so that, uh, they they don't. Um, but anyway, I had no I had no involvement myself at all. But I'm very delighted they've done that. We're happy to. <laughs> <laughs> two two more questions. We might go one right up the back to really test you, and then we'll have one in the front section. I've been section. up. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to remember exactly where it was, but I went up for a, a week into the Aboriginal community up uh, up north and. Um, uh, and anyway, I had a, had a one, wonderful week, week there, all that, but I do remember there was an awful lot of flies, so, so I don't know if any of you remember. Uh, the, the, um... Yeah, up, up the back, we got one. Hi Richard, uh, first I'd like to say thanks so much for acknowledging the importance of our people. Um, second, I'd like to ask, when you have a dream or a goal and you get to that point where it's just not working as easy as you'd like it to, or there's just so many barriers, what advice do you have to people who probably are at the lowest point and just need to keep pushing forward for their goal? Well, I think the people who are going to achieve their dreams and their goals are the people who, uh, you know, take, take the knocks, get knocked down, pick themselves up, try again, get knocked down, uh, pick themselves up, try again, learn, learn from every knock, and then ultimately um, they, they'll break through. Um, uh, and. Uh, and, and it can take a long, it can take, you know, it can take a long time to finally be successful. Um, I mean, somebody earlier, I think it was yourself, just said that you've, you've just got to work, you've got to work pretty hard in life to, uh, you know, to, to achieve your dreams. Um, and, and it's true. Um, you know, you'd be extraordinarily lucky if you're successful the first time round. 
Um, so just don't give up. Um, uh, and uh, if you fail the first time, uh, try again. If you fail the second time, try again. Uh, you know, keep picking yourself up until you're successful. Um, and um, uh, and ultimately, I'm sure you will you will be successful if you if you dream hard enough. Good luck. <laughs> Awesome. How about last question? Have we got the mic somewhere else? There we go. Hello. Um, what do you think has been the biggest barrier in your life to achieving your goals, and how did you overcome it? Um, well, I think I think that for anybody um, starting off in, you know, starting off trying to create something. Um, uh, you know, lack of lack of lack of financial resources is 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 definitely a you know a big issue. I didn't have any money when I started, and I had to try to you know conjure conjure resources out of thin air by uh, you know coming up with projects which I where I could sort of sell in advance the idea to people, get the money up front, and then and then and then launch the pro the the, the product um, and. You know, we came very, very close to failure on on a number of occasions. Um, you know, there's a very thin dividing line between success and failure, um, and you know, we just managed to stay the right side of that dividing line. Um, uh, and you know, we, we were you know struggling to pay the bills, um, uh, and um, and uh, anyway, we, we in, in the in the in the end we we, we did survive. Um, I mean, survival when you're building a business is is the key word, and you've just got to you know do everything you can to try to survive and pay the bills. Um, and um, uh, are you are you going to are you going to start a business, or what, what are your plans? I hope so one day. I really like to make a difference in the world. I like you know I have a lot of interest in working with international students, refugees, things like that. Always fascinated me and I think it's really important to support those people in our community that you know, struggle to support themselves and give them the inspiration and the hope to achieve what they can. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you... I'll give you a job if you want one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, yeah, well, I mean, one way of fulfilling your dream is to, you know, build a business and, and then use the resources from that to, you know, get out and try to make a difference in the world. Um, I mean, what, what we're trying to do is encourage uh, all businesses to become uh, for, forces for good, rather than, you know, business to be there to make money and then social workers and governments to be there to look after society. If we can actually get um, business, every single business in the world uh, to, to adopt problems and get out there and try to fix problems, I think we'll, we'll get on top of most of the world's problems. Um, and. Um, uh, you know, so uh, you know, so we're, 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 we're doing quite a big campaign to try to get business to become a force for good. Awesome. That'll that'll wrap us up for today. So, from on behalf of um, everybody here, Rich, I want okay. to say thank you for for coming along. I think it's a it's a very humbling thing. I think for us as as a group uh, who are trying to do something really powerfully together to have your support here and the university support with the Vice-Chancellor has been fantastic. So join me in giving a round of applause for Sir Richard Vance. <laughs>